And so our incredible journey starts. As the crew gathered together on the yacht called the Shiner, it comes complete with a skipper, uh, four members from the scientific uh, community from Auckland uh, University who are going to be studying uh, the wildlife on Royal Island, and four amateur radio operators, Settle 8 AMO, Settle 8 AAS, Settle 0 AJW Portable 8, and myself, Settle 8 BQD. On the yacht here you can see ZL8 BQD in the foreground and beside him is ZL0 AJW I believe. With Auckland fast disappearing into the background we head up the Auckland Harbour on our way towards uh, Rail Island. Unfortunately the weather was not favourable for us. We had very little wind and so most of the way we had to motor. Uh, using up uh, precious diesel. It wasn't too long, a couple of days of motoring before we sighted our first um, landmark which happened to be Esperance Rock which you can see uh, sitting there on the horizon. Later that day we passed uh, Corley Island shrouded in mist, very comforting to see knowing that we're still on track for the Kermitic Islands. And then uh, I think it was the next day we passed uh, Curtis uh, Island on the left and Cheeseman Island on the right. Very, very uh, uh, glad to see those islands because now we're only uh, half a day, one day at most, away from Royal Island. This was way back in 1984. And of course, in that uh, at that time, GPS was uh, not available. GPS was invented in 1979 for the U.S. military, but it was only released for public use in 1983. And uh, we were uh, on our way up to Raoul Island early 1984. We had tested a GPS unit to take with us but it proved to be totally unreliable in that it would often put us in the middle of Portugal while we were still tied up in dock in the Auckland Harbour. So we chose not to take the GPS unit with us, rather use the traditional means of navigation, maps and compasses and a sextant, and that did us very well indeed. I can assure you we were a very relieved crew when we saw Royal Island dead ahead of us. Very relieved to know that our dead reckoning had worked and got us there. It was great to see civilization after so many days at sea. And uh, there's a weather station at uh, Royal Island, manned by four people who have a two year stint on the island to look after the uh, weather station. The weather station now is uh, uh, completely automated so there's nobody on the island at all nowadays. As you can see, Rail is very rugged. The coastline is uh, very rugged indeed, uh, surrounded by cliffs. There's no natural uh, beach to land a boat on, uh, except for one very small um, beach on the other side of the island totally impractical to land there because we'd have to cart all of our gear across the island through rugged bush to be able to get to where we were going to set up our QDH. The yacht was anchored about a hundred meters offshore and we used a rubber zodiac to transport ourselves and all of our equipment uh, to an awaiting crane. Yes you heard me right, an awaiting crane. John and I were the first to uh, test out this rather unconventional way of getting onto the island. It was a matter of trying to judge the swell, uh, which would make the zodiac go up and down, with the ladder that was uh, precariously perched above us, and totally relying on the crane driver on shore to be able to get everything right and winches out of the water or out of the dinghy before we were drenched in water. We made it okay, 
which is not really what happened with Ron and Dwayne. They got it wrong, or didn't get the timing right, and got thoroughly drenched uh, before they even arrived on the island. This ladder is what we stood on to get from the Zodiac to land, totally reliant on the crane driver to get everything right for us. All our equipment and uh, baggage and luggage had to come ashore as well via a basket or cargo nets. Again, we were very anxious that the crane driver got it right, so that didn't end up uh, getting wet or dunked into the tide. The crane operator operated at the top of the cliff, uh, being guided by uh, the guys in the boat as to what was going on. After a very stressful day, we all sat down and took stock and made plans for the de-expedition. Here we have on the left uh, Dwayne, ZL0, AJW, Rolly, ZL8, BQD, John, ZL8, AAS, and then the yellow on the right, ZL, Ron, ZL8, AMO. Our shack uh, was a, is a disused wool barn. However, it's been um, repurposed and uh, as a now a bunkhouse with uh, two or three bedrooms in it and a kitchen and a small uh, dining room. And it's in this ex wool shed that we set up our radio stations. John and Ron set about putting up uh, two uh, three element uh, tri band uh, beams. Uh, to operate with while Dwayne and I we got busy putting up uh, 80 meter dipoles and 160 meter dipoles in those very tall Norfolk pines that you see in the background. We're 200 feet uh, above sea level with a drop straight down into the ocean from where those Norfolk pine trees are. And so it's time to get down to some serious operating Here's Rolly uh, operating the ICOM 720. You'll note that in those days uh, everything was manually written down into a logbook. No computer controlling in those days. In the background uh, to the right you'll see an RTTY unit. That was our digital in those days. In the meantime the scientists are out studying the birds and the wildlife around this very rugged island. Right around the island there are cliffs that uh, make uh, the island very inaccessible indeed. Very humorous uh, signs around the place uh, telling us where we are. We are indeed on Rowell Island. And of course Rowell Island is a volcano, an active volcano. And so we had to be careful where we were uh, able to go. And of course somebody had some uh, sense of humour. This is an open... Uh, speed limit sign which we find in New Zealand um, sure we're going to get up to 55 uh, or 50 miles an hour on rail breaking news Kiwis safe as yacht breaks up on island all 10 New Zealanders aboard he charted 15.5 meter yacht Shiner escaped when it sank after being driven ashore on remote Raoul Island they included five members of Auckland University's Marine Biology and Zoology Departments, four ham radio operators, and the yacht skipper. The ham radio operators from New Zealand were Roly Runciman ZL8BQD, Ron Wright ZL8AMO, John Litton ZL8AAS and Dwayne Auschman ZL0AJW Portable Buckland's 9. yacht sinks. Local crew stranded on island. The Bucklands Beach yacht, Shina, now lies beneath 30 feet of water off Raoul Island in the Kerma Deck Rescuers Group. Rescuers on the way. Ten New Zealand scientists and ham radio operators stranded on Raoul Island when their yacht ran aground this week are expected back in Auckland Kiwis next Thursday. on Raoul Island. Today, Mrs Gail Runciman, wife of amateur radio operator Roly Runciman ZL8BQD, said the party was very comfortable, in good spirits and have plenty of food. Yes, disaster had struck. During the night, Cyclone Cyril came down from Tonga and decided that it was going to run straight across Raoul Island. Our skipper and one of the scientific party boarded our, uh, the yacht Shiner and went around to the sheltered side of the island, uh, hopefully to escape the storm. Unfortunately, the storm backed up and had different ideas, 
picked our little boat up and threw it up on the rocks and there it sank and there it is to till today. Fortunately no lives were lost and nobody was injured. So here we are, four amateur radio operators on a very rare DX location island marooned for what could be up to six weeks. We had to see if the New Zealand Navy could come and pick us up. But unfortunately there wasn't to be. We were however able to get a Tongan freighter to come and uh, divert and pick us up and take us back to New Zealand. So in order to get onto the freighter they threw over a grappling net. We had to climb up this uh, grappling net to get on board the freighter. Several days later and going through yet another storm we finally arrived at home back in Auckland, New Zealand. Much to the relief of our families and ourselves of course.